Hello everybody, I decided I'm going to start doing a little series I like to call Improv Five Word Stories. It'll have a better title of course, but I had to improv it, which doesn't bode well for the stories, but I decided I want to get better at improv. I do a lot of tabletop RPGs and storytelling and such, and improv can be a little bit tricky if you haven't had a little bit of time to think ahead, but I don't want time to think ahead. I just want to get better at this. So you guys get to come along with me or go along whatever horrible journey this will be uh, with all the failures in tow. These will be almost entirely unedited except for me to take out the sound of me either drinking water, hacking a lung up, or uh, burping, mouth sounds, the horrible things no one really wants to ever hear. So, fun fact, there's actually one of these I did before that was so dang horrible. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna upload that bad boy and count it as well essentially my session zero because oh <clears throat> not good. But I guess we should just go ahead and get started. Today's words that I will be making a improv story from is skeleton tidy film intelligence duck. Okay. Without further ado. <laughs> Here's whatever this story will be. Hold on, I'm gonna do some coughing, clear my throat. It's not gonna be pleasant. But you didn't hear it, because I skipped over it and cut it out in post. Okay. <sighs> the dust that had settled on everything in their home was the same dust that had settled on their bones. The old skeleton woke up in their shack, same as every other day, and decided to sit on the porch, same as every other day, as soon as night rose. They could go out during the day, but they preferred night, given the fact that nobody would ever hunt them down in the middle of the night. And They didn't need light. They didn't need sunlight. They figure, might as well play it safe. But the days grew older and older as the skeleton sat around, and life began to become a little bit tedious. Their unlife had caused them to realize that they really don't have a lot going on. At first they were just happy to enjoy being around without any need or any kind of virtue of the land or any kind of, I don't know, oxygen or water. But over time, things like this, you either begin to take them for granted or they just begin to lose their luster. And at about this point, Ralph the Skeleton had decided it was time for something new. Now, the living had never really come close or near to Ralph's humble cabin in the woods. It was pretty deep in there, deep enough for a necromancer to find him and experiment on him, but it was cozy, and it was well hidden. So one day Ralph decided, you know what, I need some change and they decided they were going to clean out the inside of their cabin, really make their home a better version of what it had been for these past some odd couple hundred years. So that's one of the first things they did. They didn't bother laying in bed for eight hours pretending to sleep like they usually did. Instead, they decided they would start in the kitchen. And so they did. They found one of the few cloths that wasn't already covered in dusts, and decided to take it to every surface in the room and clean to the best of their ability. And given the fact that they don't have any tendons or muscle, they did a pretty good job. They went ahead and swept up the floor and cleaned off the counters, and every last morsel of dust they could find was removed in a pretty good given time. It was about, I don't know, a quarter of the life that they had lived had been dealing with dust, so. They were pretty good at it at this <clears throat> uh -oh. They were pretty good at it at this point. So, everything clean and sparkling, they looked around and admired it as the sunshine began to come through and soak up all of the darkness in the room. Eating it away, bit by bit, until it was just a bright, nice, beautiful cabin, dustless, and looked like it housed something more than just the undead. It was at this point that Ralph decided, I'm already on a hot streak. I think I'll clean out my old boxes, too. 
boxes filled with earthly possessions that, when Ralph had died and been relived, he decided he didn't need any more. Things like clothes and, I don't know, skincare products for a skeleton in the past. Oops. Uh, moving on from that. Basically things that he just didn't need anymore. He never bothered wearing clothes. He never bothered wearing his old canteen or his belts. Never bothered using the spatulas or tools that sat around in the kitchen. And never bothered cooking anything in the water. Boiling it over the pot. Hot on the fire. Never bothered enjoying the fire. Thus the wood, the tinder, the matches all. Sat safely tucked in boxes in a closet. A door that was closed every day and never opened. Until today. Ralph swung that door open with the force of someone who knew they were on a mission. Ralph was someone today, not just someone's skeleton. And so Ralph began to unload said boxes, one by one, until finally they were all laid out before him. They dug out old spatulas, they dug out old clothes, most of them moth-eaten and tattered, they found a couple old books that they thought, you know, I can still enjoy these. But most of all, they found their most prized possession. A camera. Now, back in this time, cameras were not as we knew them. They were magical. They recorded in a very different way, but they recorded all the same. They each loaded a stone and the stones were etched with magic as the recording was made and were played back, almost like a record, each one a physical iteration of the things that I had seen before it while the button was held. Next to the box with the camera was a box full of stones, things from Ralph's life that they had left behind. They had loved their camera, and they loved taking videos, but... When they left their life behind, they left their passion behind, they loaded all of their previous recordings into a box and pushed it off to the side, content to leave their life behind when it had ended. But now, a new life was just beginning. They didn't bother pulling out any of the old stones. Now was not the time to contemplate the old life that they had had. Now was the time to take new action, so instead they pulled out the bag of rocks. The rocks that had not been recorded on. And they thought, hmm, what can I do with this? They looked outside to the darkness and thought, maybe I'll try to go record something out there. Maybe I can find something worth recording. So they did. And they decided, I'll wear some clothes. Who knows? It might be chilly. I'll pretend like I can feel it tonight. So they put on a nice little hood, still worn and tattered, but probably in the best condition than most of the others, and they maneuvered their way through the forest and tried to find small areas where it was worth recording. But it was just too dark. So Ralph, being the ever-scared skeleton they are, decided that there was no way to record anything and headed home, just as the sunlight began to creep up. Now, Ralph had an idea, but they hadn't seen sun in so many years. Folks had lived and passed in the time that it had been since Ralph had seen sun. But today was the day, Ralph decided, I will go see sunlight, and I will record something amazing. So, Ralph grabbed their bag, put on a couple more layers of clothes, and attempted to look extra not dead today, tidied themselves up, and took off out the door. Now, Ralph thought, what would be worth filming? And started just looking up trees and saw wildlife, and began to film that, and said, well, hey, I remember this. I remember this feeling. And as the spark of innovation and creativity and love for the preservation of the interests of the world 
through the arch of the camera, came back to Ralph. They began to very much enjoy what they were doing. They took off towards the old lake that they loved to visit so much when they were alive. They didn't need to fish there anymore. They didn't need the fish. They didn't need to survive. They could sit there and ponder the water and dip their toes all day just like they used to do and watch the sun set and hear the fish splash. So that's what they did. As they took off, they realized, hmm, the path is a bit more worn than I seem to remember. They'd never really noticed it in the darkness of night, but during day, it was a bit more obvious. Now, it could have been from animals, but Ralph thought, no. No, no near animal would just put stones to mark the path. So they followed it, and sure enough, it appears as though someone else had found their nice little lakeside Ooh, I can't think of a word for a rest that's more creative than rest. I tried to go too far. I'll reel it back. Their lakeside abode. Ha <laughs> ha! So, there sat a new bench there. In place of the old one that Ralph had created many years ago that had rotted away. As well as a small beach lined with stones that was not there before. No, before it was just a large pile of rocks that you had to climb over to get to the water. And Ralph thought, it's a shame that the world has moved on without me and that I might bump into someone here, but look at all of the lustrous wonder they've put into this and how well they've respected what I left behind. Ralph couldn't help but smile a little bit and took off towards the bench. No one was around right now, so it couldn't hurt to relax for a minute. Ralph sat in his favorite spot in the bench and watched the water. The fish leaped out every once in a while, and Ralph couldn't help but smile at that as well. But then, something incredible. A single duck, swimming in circles around the pond, going to and fro, and Ralph watched it. Watched it for the longest time and thought, This, this is what's worth filming. And just began to take small clips of the duck. And though there were other ducks, this duck seemed special. All the other ducks would just dive and get whatever they needed from the water, whether it be food, water itself, or just a nice bath. But this one, they were gathering sticks. And off to the side, Roth noticed they appeared to be building what may have been a nest. They would fly off and come back, and fly off and come back. And after about the hundredth time of Ralph watching them, content perfectly, waiting eagerly for their return, he saw about where they went. And Ralph came back every single day, took videos of the progress on the nest that they had made off to the side of the lake. Ralph was pretty sure he knew what this meant. This little duck was going to have a good little following of little ducklings soon, and he wanted to make sure he got every last bit on video. So, he kept coming back, kept recording, kept taking progress pictures and videos, and as he could, he did his best to catalog the duck's incredible little life of simplicity and wonder. Now, Ralph did this for a while. A good long while. And... It caught Ralph off guard when on one of the days he thought, Any day now, those little ducklings will come hatching out of those eggs I saw the other day, and I'll get to watch them swim across the lake for the first time. And as Ralph reached into the bag to grab another stone to record, he found the bag empty. Not a single stone left to record with. If he had a heart, it sank. Wherever it was, it sank deeper. He dropped the bag, put his hands on his head, and gave a hearty sigh. <sighs> well, now what will I do? said Ralph. I was just really beginning to enjoy this again. He looked around. He looked at the bag. He looked at his camera. And he thought of the ducklings, and he thought, No, 
No, life has finally been worth living. Just enjoying these slight things out of the world. I just, I'm not going to give it up. And he took the bag, and he stuffed it in the pocket of a robe, threw the robe on, and found a nice, deep cloak with a hood that would cover most of his face. And he thought, all right, this is how I will do it. I will go into the town, and I will buy more stones. As he popped his treasure chest open, he remembered, oh yes, I did sell these videos, didn't I? As he swished his hand through the piles of gold and platinum that lie in this chest, he thought, I don't think I quite need this, do I? And so he took the chest with him, and took it to town. Now, it was an arduous journey for someone with no muscle holding something so heavy. But along the way, he went ahead and came across a merchant. And the merchant stopped him and said, Oh, traveler, could you be in perhaps need of anything I can offer? And Ralph did not look at him. He simply kept his head down and he said, Well, there is one thing I could use. Do you happen to have a helmet. You see, I've been working in some dangerous areas. I could really use some protection. And the person said, what a helmet? I guess I do have a helmet. That is rather odd. What kind of precarious situations are you working in, my man? And Ralph just simply sighed and said, oh, deadlier things every day. Nothing to concern yourself with. I will pay top coin. And so he paid for a nice helmet that covered almost all of his face. And without swishing his cloak around or moving his robe, you couldn't tell there was a skeleton under all this clothes. But far more, Ralph knew that there was far more than a skeleton under the clothes. Ralph took off towards the town and finally got there and saw it bustling with people, which caused his heart, wherever it was, to stop dead in its tracks. He thought, Okay, I've been a long time long time out of this, I'm sure I can get right back into it if I really try. And he took a step into the city, and he felt dread. So many people, so many voices, what if one of them brushed past him and felt no flesh, but only hard bone? And he took a deep breath, and decided, this is worth it. And he scoured the marketplace, merchants screaming over the other, trying to draw others over, trying to get people to just come take a peek at their wares, feel them, have them fitted, just for a hitch to get that extra bit of coin. Ralph had no interest in any of these things, and searched for the nearest curious little magical shop he could find. Wandering off to the shop, Ralph saw the illustrious golden trim sign outside and thought, oh yes. They have as much money as I do. I'm sure they're in the same business as I. A crude remark to make, but simple for someone who'd been out of society for so long. He walked in, and there was no one else in there except one woman and the person tending the store. Now, Ralph walked up and waited patiently in behind. Ooh, in behind. Do not wait in the behind, and waited behind the girl, who seemed to be in a good mood today, speak to the man behind the counter. They were exchanging words of some sort of magical thing, and Ralph caught on a little bit to their conversation. He tried not to listen. He didn't want to be disrespectful and eavesdrop, but at the mention of the lake, he couldn't help but listen. Excuse me, what is it you just said? The woman turned around and said, I was looking to buy a large pouch, something that holds more than it seems it can, so I can fit all the feed for the duck. I love to go to the lake. I love to feed the ducks, but it never seems as though I have enough feed in my pouch. But I've heard that there are pouches that hold far more than they seem they can and I would love to have one that I can just dump a whole bag of feed into and spend all day at the lake, feeding the fish and the ducks and enjoying the cool breeze. 
Ralph paused for a moment and said, That sounds absolutely wonderful. You must be the one who put up that new bench by the lake, aren't you? And she replied, Yes, that was me. Do you also head to the lake often? And Ralph said, I do have a cabin near the lake. I love to visit that lake, actually. Tell me, what seems to be the problem? Well, the bag itself is apparently very expensive, the woman sighed. I don't have quite enough cash to... And without another word, Ralph popped his giant treasure chest of gold and platinum onto the counter and said, Take whatever you need to get that bag, and you do me a favor and you feed those ducks. Because I truly would love to see that lake prosper even more. The woman smiled and said, You joke. You must be joking. And he said, No. I've found that in my life I have little need for earthly possessions, and that lake right there that you love just as much as I, that is one of my favorite things in the world. So you take everything you need and you feed those ducks until they are happy as can be. The woman was overjoyed. The man took the gold, gave her a nice, beautiful, expertly crafted leather pouch with a magical purple and gold trim. She thanked Ralph and took off. Ralph then approached the counter, and the man said, Well, that was awful kind of you. Where do you get this kind of money? And Ralph said, Oh, probably the same place you do magical things and all, I actually like to sell videos and photos from my camera. You might happen to recognize this, and he pulled out one of his already recorded stones and his camera, to which the man replied, Oh, yes, yes, I have seen one of those before. In fact, I have many recordings, if that's what you're looking for. And Ralph said, Oh, no, no, no. I would like a series of blanks, if I could get them. And the man said, Oh, of course. How many would you like? And Ralph just pushed that box a little bit closer, and he said, However many this chest can hold. And so Ralph left, a few gold and platinum to his name, but with a chest full of stones to make new memories. He took off as fast as he could. He raced back to his cabin, stashed the stones away, picked up a couple, tossed them in his pocket, and ran all the way back to the lake. Today had to be the day. He got there, and there was the woman, sitting there, feeding the ducks. He approached beside her, and he said, Excuse me, ma'am, may I sit here? And she said, Of course. Anything for someone who so generously allowed me to keep doing what I love. And Ralph responded with, it is not me who allowed you to keep doing what you love. I'm sure you would have come back here a thousand times refilling your bag. And she said, of course I would have. But I can't help but thank your generosity. Please, sit. Ralph sat down next to the woman, and he loaded up his camera, and he waited. And the woman turned to him and said, Pray tell, what are you waiting for with that strange device? And Ralph said, I've been watching these ducks for the past few months. And I can tell one of these ducks, my favorite duck, is about to come through with her own litter of new ducklings, and I want to catch the first swim on camera. The woman smiled and said, that sounds wonderful. If you don't mind, might I be able to sit with you and stay until she appears? I don't know which one you're talking about. You'll have to point her out to me. And Ralph said, of course. I'm sure it will be fantastic. And so they waited, and a couple hours went by, and a breeze started to whip up. Ralph had been so intent on making sure he got the video that he didn't notice when his clothes began to billow in the wind. But neither of them noticed. They were so focused on the lake, and as soon as Ralph saw her, there she is! She's right out there on the water. He raised his camera, and he took it the best video he could ever take. The little mama duck left the shoreline, and they thought, oh no, today must not be the day. But she turned back and looked back at the shore, and then one by one, little yellow flukes began to float out onto the water behind mama duck 
as she reined them into a big group, and they followed her in a line. Ralph couldn't help but to laugh, and the woman next to him looked overjoyed as well, and their eyes met, and they looked down to reveal Ralph's entirely skeleton arm holding the camera. The woman paused for a moment, and Ralph paused for just as long. They did nothing, they stared at each other, and then she kind of backed away and said, Sir, what seems to be the matter with you? And he... He didn't want to deal with what would happen from this. He wouldn't bother lying. He just simply... he. <sighs> All right. I might be a little dead. And the woman jumped up. Dead? What do you mean you're dead? And Ralph said, It's okay, though. Don't worry. I will leave this lake. I will never bother you again. Just please... Mention me to no one. I have my recording of my duck. I will never bother anyone again. I'll leave right now. And I will not return. And he got up, and he walked away, looking back at the ducks as he did. And as he stepped onto the path, and out of sight of the woman, he began to lose steam, slowing down on his way home. <sighs> What a dang shame, Ralph thought. I was really beginning to enjoy that. And as he began picking up pace again, he heard footsteps from behind and he thought, I should probably run. But he didn't. He didn't think quick enough to do so. And the woman stopped him and she said, Wait. It does not matter to me if you are bone or flesh. You're a kind man. I will not tell anyone about you, I promise. And I would never want you to have to stop coming back to this lake to visit the ducks, the fish, and the fresh water breeze. Ralph stopped for a moment and he said, I would be very grateful for that. If you'd like, I can record some videos for you as well. The woman smiled. She said, I would love that. I usually come around twice a week towards the evening, after I get off work, I also wouldn't mind if perhaps our meeting time might line up a little better. That is, if you don't have anything else to do. And Ralph said, I have nothing better to do than to appreciate that beautiful lake with a fellow duck lover. I look forward to seeing you again, miss. What is your name? The woman stopped for a second and said, I suppose... If we're going to be bird-watching buddies together, it's only fair that you know my name. My name is Aerith, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you again in the evening, two days a week. Ralph smiled and said, Well, Aerith, I look forward to making many memories with you and to return to the lake every week. God, for a first one, I hope that wasn't too long or nothing. All right. <clears throat> kind of went into storyteller voice there. Don't know if that's going to be good or bad, but... Hey, if you enjoyed this story, I very much appreciate you making it this far, giving it a listen. Uh, these are going to be things I try to do regularly. It is hot in this closet filled with acoustic foam. So I'm going to go ahead and dip out now. But if you stay to the very end, thank you very much for listening. I'm going to edit this, take out the pops, take out the mouth sounds, all the coughing, all the drinking, and try to just leave it as one coherent story. I'd really like to get one of these out a week. Not certain if I will be able to, but hell, I'm definitely not going to stop anytime soon. So, oh, what's the thing? Oh. oh, yeah. Until next time, my lovely listeners, go write your own story. Is that it? Nah, I don't know. It's improv.